speaking with Amanda Copeland, author of The Orchardist, and um, she's a 5 under 35 nominee. I just wanted to tell you how much I loved the book. My first question is, have you listened to the audiobook? I have listened to a snippet of the audiobook. Um, it just was too weird for me <laughs> to listen to some sort of stately man yes. read my work back to me. But I will say that um, I have heard that he mispronounces some town names, which certain locals apprise me of. So well, I just wanted to tell you that I, I thought it was wonderful. I read it oh, and I listened to it on the oh, audiobook. Great. So that's how much I loved it, oh. loved the book. And um, I was really amazed at what I imagine is the huge amount of research that you had to do. And of course, you know, I did wonder how someone as young as you are knew so much. I mean, a lot of, you know, what I imagine was research felt so authentic. Even just from something small like the gardening to the horse wrangling mm -hmm. to the childbirth, which felt like, you know, just really authentic. Mm -hmm. I have two children. Um, and so I'm wondering how you, how much research you did and how you found a way to incorporate that into the book as seamlessly as you did. Well, I think I had sort of a, an approach to research where I would, you know, just imagine what I thought happened and I would just go back and fact check and do, um, you know, further research as it was required of what I was writing, but um, but I tried not to sort of educate myself, read, I mean, of course I wanted to educate myself, but just, you know, I didn't want the book to be like a history text as well, so sometimes, you know, I did sort of, um, you know, I read about the history of uh, Wenatchee, like just Wenatchee, um, and I got really interested in that, and I actually had a, you know, big section where I talked about that, but it was too like, oh, look at me. I'm a historian, so I had to cut all that out. But like for the horse wrangling, you know, I did very specific research for that. But mostly, I tried to just imagine what it would look like, and I would make up terms I didn't know, and then go back and, and fill that stuff in. Well, that's really smart. I, I think. I mean, it is because I think a lot of times people, writers, especially when it's their first book, do maybe do too much research, and it's hard to let go. But coming at it from that's great. Um, and another question, I'm sorry, I just saw Ted Thompson. Hi, Ted Thompson. Um, another question I have is, and this is something that I love asking writers, my favorite question is, when did you give yourself permission to think of yourself as a writer with a capital W? You know, I mean, some people feel that really early. For some people, it's like publication that gives them that confidence or getting into an MFA program. But was there a moment or maybe a mentor that helps you get there, or, you know, when did, not so much when you start calling yourself a writer, which is a totally, you know, different thing, but when you start thinking of yourself in a way that you could take yourself seriously as a writer. I think it actually um, happened when I sold the book. I felt suddenly I had this confidence that I hadn't had before. I've always had a, a lot of confidence when it comes to the work, like about guarding my work and, um, like, I guess I feel conf I've always felt confident about my relationship to whatever, whatever project I'm working on, especially the novel, because I've right. been working on this novel for so long. But definitely something happened when someone else said, oh, I value this enough to give you money for it <laughs> and share it with the world. You know, that was when I sort of Real sat up and was like, oh, well, now I can call myself a writer and I don't have to, like, hide behind my hair and, you know, um, wonder if I'm actually ever going to publish anything. So, um, not that you can't be a writer if you never publish, but um, there is just sort of this legitimacy, I guess, that comes with being published like that. It's challenging to give yourself permission, I think, to spend all this time alone with imaginary characters, um, and it's a very solitary act. Um, so, I, my next question is, um, I was thinking about how serious author photos are, and I feel like yours is a nice mix, right? But there's some really devastatingly serious ones. <laughs> right. And so my question is, what makes you laugh? It's kind of general. In general or just In with general. author photos? In general. Anything. Um, well, sometimes I laugh at people who, <laughs> this is terrible, 
um, who sort of takes the, themselves too seriously. I mean, the, talking about author photos, there's some really serious author photos where they're very posed, and it's just sort of funny to think that like um, that people can <laughs> take themselves that seriously. So that always makes me laugh, you know. Um, stuff on the internet about dogs and cats makes me laugh. <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm not very hard to to please. <laughs> favorite movie is Elf. Oh, yeah, I've seen that. Multiple um, times. And then um, my next question is, I only have two more questions, is um, what is something that you do to relax that's, or just something that you love doing, an obsession or an activity that has nothing to do with reading or writing? Well, I thought you were going to say nothing to do with writing, and I was going to say reading, because that's the only other thing I really do. But um, So I live in Portland, Oregon, and um, it does rain there a lot, but um, I live in the southeast quadrant of the city, and I Portland, to me, is very walkable. It's um, small enough. It's, it's a city, but it's small enough that you can get anywhere in the city, really, within a day, you know, and I have a lot of time if I'm not writing. So um, I really like to walk. I walk to downtown to Powell's and um, I just like to walk along the river and visit different friends and walking is very, very good for me, I think. Yeah. And uh, one more thing is I just wanted to congratulate you on the Whiting Award, oh. which is wonderful. And I know that you have to keep it secret, right, before the ceremony. Right. So who did you tell? <laughs> You're going to get me in trouble with the Whiting people. They're going to take my money away. Um, I told my boyfriend um, and my parents, and that's it. Yeah, those are good choices. Yeah, but you know, when you say when you invite, there's a, you know the ceremony, yeah. and you can't you can invite people, but you can't say what it's for. So all my friends, you know, most of my friends are writers, so they knew they they knew yeah. what was up when I was like, can you come to this secret party? Right. <laughs> wink, so wink. You know. Yeah. Thank you. It's very really, really cool. deserved it. Thank you. And my last question is, will you sign my book? I will. Of course, I will sign Yay! your book. Thank <laughs> you.